By creating an enabling environment for young people to thrive, we will lay the foundation for a prosperous future for all Ghanaians, not just a few. But our commitment to the youth goes beyond digital empowerment. The NDC Youth Manifesto outlines several key initiatives, including increased access to quality education from the basic and second cycle to tertiary levels, affordable health care, and numerous job creation programs. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to acknowledge the commendable efforts of our national youth wing led by indomitable Giorgio Pariado. AKA Pablo. For this excellent, well choreographed youth event. Since I launched Ghana's first national youth policy in Cape Coast in 2010, during my tenure as Vice President of this country, I remain committed to recognizing and honoring our youth on International Youth Day. And as president, I consistently hosted gatherings with young people and youth development stakeholders to celebrate the ingenuity and contribution of the youth to our country. And indeed, one of the most memorable of those occasions was the day I spent with a young cocoa farmer and his family in Asen North. We were later to come and win a historic by-election in that constituency. Also during my pre presidency, my government prioritized investments in youth development across various sectors, including education, skills training, health, recreation, sports, and job creation. We expanded access to skills training opportunities throughout the country, as well as to teacher and nursing training programs and tertiary education. I also purposefully appointed intelligent and hardworking young men and women to serve in my government, and they performed creditably well. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, their excellent performance gives me the confidence to appoint more young people to serve in my government from January 2025. <laughs> God willing, when I am voted president. You just saw the talent that was displayed here this morning. We have the young men and we have the young women. The National Youth Authority Act, which was enacted in 2016, strengthened the framework for youth development. And that piece of legislation streamlined the operations of the National Youth Authority. It increased youth representation on its governing board from one, a single one, to three members and recognized the establishment of the Ghana Youth Federation as a platform for all youth-led organizations. The law also mandated the creation of regional and district youth committees to encourage youth involvement in decision making. And importantly, it allocated a portion of the District Assembly's Common Fund to enhance youth development addressing the centuries-old complaint of resource constraints. Unfortunately, the District Assembly's Common Fund is not being paid. It's many quarters in arrears. The challenges facing our youth, mismanagement of our economy, pervasive corruption, nepotism, and poor governance under the current administration have combined to negatively impact the youth of Ghana. Many young people are eager and ready to work, but the struggle to find employment is a huge challenge. The rising unemployment rate, which currently stands at a staggering 14.7%, was worsened by the recent banking sector cleanup, which led to widespread job losses especially among the banking and finance prof professionals. Other statistics that show the dire situation of Ghanaian youth is the 21.7% youth unemployment rate. 
the 8 million Ghanaians who went a day without food last year, and many of them young people. And you heard about 001 and 100 and 010. And also the 1.9 million young people, youth, who are not in employment, they are not in education, and they are not in skills training. The harsh business climate has caused numerous businesses to collapse, leading to further layoffs. The ongoing crisis is fostering frustration amongst young people, increasing poverty, social unrest, and disenchantment with the whole democratic process. The scarcity of job opportunities compels many young individuals to resort to low-paying informal work or seeking opportunities abroad, thereby exacerbating the brain drain that hampers our national development. And if you go to Nigeria, they call it Jakpain. To Jakpa means to run away from your country and go abroad. This reality perpetuates inequalities and undermines social stability as the potential of our youth remains untapped. To tackle these issues, I have proposed a sustainable vision to reset Ghana by introducing We need a reset by introducing and aggressively implementing the 24-hour economy policy. If, if you are hearing about the 24-hour economy initiative for the first time, or you are pretending that you do not know what it is about, please cock your ears now and listen to me explain it again. This is a policy that is not peculiar only to Ghana. A 24-hour economy will enable one job to be shared across three shifts and employ three persons, providing job opportunities for three workers instead of one. And that is what, and that is what my intel intelligent, eloquent, younger, sister, or should I say my daughter, explained us, one, three, three. This policy aims to drive economic growth, improve service delivery, and create jobs in both the public and private sectors, and will prioritize the needs of our young people. And for the policy to thrive, the government will have to invest in security and public safety measures including recruiting additional personnel, enhancing street lighting to promote nighttime economic activity. Essential components of the public sector's 24-hour service, that is for the public sector, would include a 24-hour ports and harbor, 24-hour customs service, 24-hour banking service, 24-hour vehicle licensing service, and 24-hour passport services, amongst others. I also intend to incentivize the private sector to operate 24 hours, and targeted sectors in the private sector would include 24-hour agro-processing, 24-hour manufacturing, 24-hour construction, 24-hour sanitation and waste management, Twenty-four hour transport services, twenty-four hour financial institutions, and twenty-four hour retail and tourism services. Aside from incentives that will be provided for these businesses that will sign up for the policy, increased demand will be driven by deliberate government procurement of locally made goods and expanded export drive under the ETLS, which is the ECOWAS Trade Liberalization Scheme, and the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. This will absorb the increased supply of goods and services that we do not use locally. These enhancements will create decent, well-paying jobs and training opportunities for you, our vibrant Ghanaian youth. 
empowering our youth through digital skills. My younger brothers and sisters, ICT is vital to our 24-hour economic policy. We will equip young people with digital skills and job opportunities, including the One Million Coders program that I referred to previously. The Accra Digital Center was established under my presidency to facilitate jobs for you, the young people. We will decentralize the center to other regions, and these centers will train students and unemployed graduates, enabling them to capitalize on digital job opportunities. We will work with the telecom companies to reduce data costs and deploy free Wi-Fi in all our schools and selected public places. And we have the capacity to do this. With fiber, with satellite internet, we can provide free Wi-Fi services to all our public institutions. My dear Ghanaian youth, the eight-hour work system that we currently operate is woefully inadequate, inadequate to generate the production, the productivity, and well-paying jobs that are needed to revive Ghana's bankrupt economy. They are also inadequate to produce enough jobs for our young people. As I stated during my John Mahama Live virtual event some weeks ago, extraordinary times require extraordinary interventions for exceptional results. <laughs> Ghana is experiencing extraordinary hardships, and the youth are also choking under the yoke of these hardships. This being the case, the 24-Hour Economy Initiative is the best and most extraordinary pathway to generating the decent and well-paying jobs that our young people need, the jobs that our young people are waiting for. We will create an enabling environment with deliberate policies for business companies and government institutions to operate 24-7 in a three-hour shift system to stimulate job creation. I'm determined to provide the necessary incentives such as favorable tax, cheaper and more reliable power in order to encourage this. We'll also provide financial support through the Ghana Exim Bank from our oil revenues and the Women's Development Bank amongst others. And this is why the Trade Union Congress described the 24-hour economy initiative, and I quote, as a great idea that could be the game changer for youth employment. <laughs> and also note that the Ghana Federation of Labor, the Chamber of Local Governance, Government, the National Union of Ghana Students, and the IEA, amongst many other well-meaning Ghanaians, have spoken favorably about the 24-hour economy initiative. We shall not fail them. We shall deliver to exceed their expectations. And we will create the jobs that you young people have been waiting for. And when these jobs are created, none of you will be left out. But let me say at this point that before I left office in January 2017, my government through the NDPC, that's the National Development Planning Commission, had developed the 40-year development plan. And this 40-year development plan had captured the 24-hour economy initiative. So it's not like a new initiative. We had thought about it already in 2017. My children, my young brothers and sisters, elections have consequences. And this is why you must vote wisely for change on December 7th. You must vote for John and Jane, and also for your NDC 
parliamentary candidate. Because we need a healthy majority in parliament to be able to carry out the programs that are needed to provide jobs for our young people. I'm resolute in my commitments to establish a dedicated ministry for youth development. This ministry will centralize the coordination of youth initiatives in Ghana. It will facilitate job creation. It will promote entrepreneurship. It will provide scholarships and enhance youth participation in decision making while ensuring while ensuring the effective implementation of the National Youth Authority Act. Despite various initiatives, a significant gap still exists between the skills offered by educational institutions and the demands of our job market. Only about 10% of our young people receive formal skills training and thereby hampering their employability and their economic prospects. This current situation is detrimental to innovation and economic growth, and particularly affecting artisans and craftsmen who need access to modern tools and training. And therefore, to address these shortcomings, the next NDC government will partner with religious bodies and other non-governmental organizations to invest in diverse skills development programs to enhance the economic opportunities that are available to our young people. And so, the National Apprenticeship Program, which is NAP, NAP, and the expanded TVET centers will provide skills upscaling for youth who do not progress to the tertiary level. Political bias and nepotism have tarnished the recruitment processes within Ghana's security services and our public sector. This undermines trust in public institutions and creates disillusionment amongst our youth. Under my leadership, recruitment will be decentralized to ensure equitable representation of all our citizenry within the security agencies and our public services. We shall not do secret recruitment in the bedrooms of party chairmen or in chief's palaces. We will give the opportunity for all young Ghanaians who want to serve to be able to do so. According to a 2023 study by the Center for Democratic Development, 55% of young professionals in these fields reported delayed postings or recruitment bottlenecks due to favoritism and political interference. Now talk about challenges in our secondary and tertiary education sectors. Our secondary education sector is grappling with overcrowding and inadequate resources, contributing to diminished quality overall. A study by Africa Education Watch revealed that between the 2019-2020 and the 2022-2023 academic years, government's annual per student spending under the free SHS program was only 23%, while parents bore the remaining 77% of cost of education. The next NDC government will improve the free SHS program, we will engage the stakeholders in education and ensure proper infrastructure and sustainable dedicated funding for free SHS. We shall also decentralize the procurement of food and other supplies to the headmasters and school bases in order to improve the quality of food and also boost the local economies in the districts where the schools are located. We shall expand access by building more infrastructure in existing secondary schools and we shall dedicate funding to completing the e-blocks in order that more children can have the opportunity to go to school. We will abolish the double track system.
so that all our children can go to school at the same time and vacate at the same time. Our kids will not come and stay at home for four months and go to school having forgotten everything they learned in the previous term. Moreover, tertiary students face financial barriers with over 40% struggling to afford education and accommodation. And as I recently announced during a visit to the University of Ghana, my government will partner with the private sector to demarcate a portion of the vast tracts of land that the universities are holding to construct hostels for students on campus at reasonable rates. and thereby address the accommodation challenges that students are facing. The professional institutions of architects and engineers will be engaged to provide uniform designs for these hostels and a costing of the hostels that will be built on all campuses and that will be under our program of a bed for all, a bed for all students to be able to stay on campus. We'll also launch the No Fee Stress Initiative, providing fee-paying support to eligible students, especially through the Student Loan Trust Fund. The reintroduction of a quota system has reduced admissions across both nursing and teacher training sectors, restricting entry for many youth who desire to train as teachers and nurses. We deplore the Akufuado Baumia administration's practice of opening the recruitment portal only when elections are coming. We'll implement a policy of continuous recruitment of teachers and nurses, especially for the underserved areas. The next NDC government pledges to abolish the teacher licensure exam. We will make teacher licensing a part of the final year program in colleges of education. The John and Jane administration will implement strategies to address teacher accommodation challenges, especially in rural areas, offering incentives to encourage them to accept postings to underserved areas. Ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, only 20% of youth-led startups receive the necessary funding or mentorship. This lack of support results in high failure rates among young entrepreneurs, stifling innovation and job creation. And so the next NDC government will prioritize support for young entrepreneurs to ensure that they have access to capital and business development services and training. We will support them with funds to start and accelerate the pace of already existing youth-owned businesses. And now, the iconic Women's Development Bank. The Women's Development Bank will also help ensure gender equality by providing funds to millions of women across the country. My dear young woman, I urge you to take advantage of the prospect that this Women's Bank is going to offer. You can start your small and medium enterprises and you can be sure that the little capital and credit that you need will be provided, training will be provided on how to manage your businesses so that you can grow your businesses and create more jobs for yourself and the teeming youth of this country. This unique bank will focus on job creation and the myriad of challenges women-owned businesses face in accessing credits and financial resources. The bank will further focus on providing financial services and products that are tailored to the needs of women entrepreneurs and business owners in Ghana. It will train young females and non-graduates in entrepreneurship and finance them to start food and beverage, manufacturing ventures, agro-processing, agro trading and commerce, and marketing of various 
uh, local products. The Women's Bank will be one of the major sources for reducing imports because it will micro-target products that stimulate import substitution. As the Exim Bank promotes exports, the Women's Bank will enhance import substitution. A new crop of youth agribusiness people will be financed and mentored to boost the agro-processing space. We implement a program to su supply simple agro-processing equipment and capital to young entrepreneurs to add value to local produce for the domestic market and also for export. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've been excited watching and listening to all the presentations that were made here today. Because our youth who have spoken here today and made presentations have confirmed that our young people are our future change makers. For me, John Dramani Mahama, I've always recognized the incredible potential and power of our young people. I'll continue to recognize and appreciate the importance of empowering them to help shape a better tomorrow for our country. And in conclusion, my young Ghanaians dare to dream and dare to achieve. Our dreams can transform not only our future, but also the future of our communities, our country, and the world at large. You are the catalyst for positive change. And through you, your inspiring actions and determination, we can bring about the transformation change that our world and our country desperately needs. Young people, remember always to dream big. Remember always to aim high. And remember always to strive for greatness. The power you wield as a young Ghanaian is immense and powerful. By unleashing your potential and embracing your destiny, you can make a global impact. Understand that the future of our nation lies in your hands and we're committed to supporting you every step of the way in realizing your full potential. Young people are the driving force behind sustainable development and your voices need to be heard loud and clear. And this is why I've decided in addition to this function on International Youth Day to host a Mahama Youth Town Hall meeting later tonight at the Bukum Boxing Arena. Through, through this one-of-a-kind event, I will engage with young people directly and listen to your concerns and aspirations. Your vote as a young Ghanaian is not just a choice, but it's a powerful tool for shaping the future of our country. And so as you join hands with me to build the Ghana we want together, I assure you I will wage a relentless fight against corruption. I can assure you, corrupt officials will be brought to book, whether they are serving in the current administration or in the administration that I will lead by the grace of God come January 7th, 2025. We must take this country that was given to us, bequeathed to us, by those who struggle for independence, including our world-recognized founder, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. We must take this country. We must take that country, Ghana, back from the small family cabal and open up the opportunities for all our people, irrespective of politics, ethnicity, or religion. You can also be assured that as we have promised, some of the obnoxious taxes that have been imposed on our people and have become a heavy tax burden will be scrapped, including the e-levy. <laughs> the 
the betting tax, emissions, and other taxes. My brothers and sisters, I urge you to stand with us and stand for your dreams and stand for the Ghana we want to build together. Together we can build the Ghana we want where every young Ghanaian has the opportunity to succeed and not just based on family and relationships. With these policy proposals, I invite you, the youth of Ghana, to partner with me and Nana Jane in our shared commitment to restore the nation's potential for future generations. Together, let us forge a brighter path for Ghana, a nation where the dreams of our youth can flourish. Let us work together towards a future of progress and prosperity for all. And I wish you a happy International Youth Day. And I have the honor, I have the honor, I have the honor and privilege to declare the NDC National Youth Manifesto duly launched. <laughs>